Forget with those people, the mental health and and your nutritionist because you want life, because you love yourself, because you know that you deserve better. If you're just doing it as a fad or a trend because everyone else is doing it, it's not going to work. You're going to be miserable because you're not mentally ready to accept the responsibility. And that's why I had to get to a place where I was mentally ready to accept the responsibility for me, for what I put in my body, for what I didn't put in my body, for what I do with my body, for what I don't do with my body. I had to accept that responsibility. And that's where I'm at now in life. I'm accepting the responsibility. Um, The goal with my therapist was to get my muscle mass back up. Because between the weight loss and plus not eating any protein like that, I probably ate protein once a week for the last five years. Um, not getting that protein in me, it caused my muscles to just go down. I lost mass. And my muscles, uh, when I weighed in, my muscles only weighed 110 pounds trying to carry a 350 plus size um, frame. You know, it's <laughs> it's no wonder I was sick. It's no wonder I was in the bed all the time. That's why I didn't have no energy. I didn't have no energy to do nothing, didn't have no energy to exercise, didn't have no energy to go to the store. I promise you, um, going through this depression phase, I probably went to the store maybe once. I even stopped going to church and stuff. And it was people that, you know, just, they encourage you to be sick. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful, even of church folk that you trust with your store, you got to be careful that they're not encouraging you to stay sick or be sick when you're in your healing process. Because during my healing process, that's why I had to stay away from people because they were encouraging me to stay sick. They were encouraging me to stay depressed. And sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it. But yeah, that's what they're doing when they're encouraging you to... um Give permission to sickness. Give permission to mental illness. You know, go ahead and stay in that position. You know, um, I didn't want to hear any of that. I was just in the point where my mind was made up. I'm coming up out of this. I'm going to lose weight, but I need to build my muscle. I- I'd been losing weight the last two years, but it wasn't in a healthy way. So I gained back about 30 or 40 pounds of that. Because it was it was because I didn't have money to eat. So, you see, I had so many things going against me. But I can say I thank God today that I'm able to sit here and tell you that as far as bills go during that time, it wasn't that I was broke. It was that I was paying off those bills so that I could have a better future. And that was my sacrifice, which was my food. That was the sacrifice. And now where I'm at, I'm doing really good. I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want to eat it. But I choose to eat the things that are going to be nourishment to my body. I choose to um, only be around people who are going to nourish my mind and not confuse my mind. Not try to cause my mind to waver or be influenced by any negativity. So the thing to this low carb thing is you can get on as many diets as you want to, but if you aren't mentally ready, it's not going to happen. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to try to keep up with what everybody else is doing. But what is, what is your body doing and saying to you in this season? Where are your aches and pains at? See, I had to, uh, I had to tell all this stuff in order to get the help that I needed. Cause you know, you can go get help, but if you lie to them, They're going to tell you the wrong things to do. So I was honest with the people that I pulled in on my team. I said, my elbows are aching. Y'all, I know I don't say that word right. My children say I don't say it right. But to me, it feels right. But my elbows were aching. My knees were aching. It was to the point where when I walked, it felt like I was dragging blocks around. That's how heavy it was. It felt like I was just dragging those blocks around. Um, my breathing wasn't good. I was wheezing all the time. Um, my mind stayed in a brain fog. I mean, I stayed in a brain fog. I don't know how I got to A to Z most of the time. You know, A to B. I don't know how I got to those places most of the time. I mean, that's how zoned out I really was. I wasn't present in my life because of the anxiety and depression. But now I'm present. I'm back now. Now I'm more like me than ever before. 
before my dad died, I was doing good. I was going out and, you know, enjoying myself, chilling, hanging out with guys and, and women. You know, I was having a good time. But when he passed, it did something to me that, that I took a, I took a loss. I took a personal loss and didn't know how to deal with it. So I suppressed it. And when you suppress your emotions, I couldn't even tell most of the time when I was hungry. I didn't know when I was hungry. I couldn't feel it. I was numb to so many things, y'all. I didn't realize my children. I didn't even realize y'all. Listen, this is how numb I was. I didn't even realize that my son had been moved out of my house for two years. That's how numb I was. I didn't realize he had been moved out until he went through what he went through last year. That's how numb I was. I didn't realize he was gone. I didn't realize that my daughter had then really just grown up, grown up. You know, I numbed out. These last five years, I was not present. I was my I was meant I was mentally suppressed. Therefore, I didn't let anybody in my heart, and, and I didn't let anybody close to me because I didn't know how to deal with things. But that just goes to show you, you can't have one without the other. You're not going to lose weight and appreciate it if you're not in a good, good state of mental health. Because when I did lose the 176 pounds, I felt like I was sick. I didn't know how to receive victory. There are so many ailments that go along with losing weight. Yes, you will wake up one day and say, this is what I'm going to do. But you have to be mentally fit to um, adjust to the changes. There's one point where I was losing weight. When I, when I started with the low carb back here in October, um, my therapist told me, she said, now, you're going to gain muscle and we're not going to see the scale go down we might see the scale go up because you're gaining muscle she said but don't be discouraged if you gain weight before you lose weight long as it's muscle that we're building that's fine and so um sure enough the first time i went back to weigh in i gained like three pounds but it was three pounds of muscle so now i'm starting to lose pounds and I'm loving it. I'm loving this for the first time. I'm like, I look at myself and I'm like, girl, where you been? Yo, diva, where you been at? You been hiding behind wigs. You been hiding behind lipstick, fingernail polishes, um, um, different things. Behind behind your business. Where you been at? God says it's time to push you in the front. <laughs> ah, so, um. I am in a better place. I, I feel a lot better mentally, spiritually. And I can tell you, through it all, through it all, it was faith that kept me going. It was really my faith that kept me going like never before. If I hadn't had faith in God, I couldn't have, I couldn't have achieved the things that I achieved during that state of depression. That was depression, y'all. Depression and anxiety. But I was still being productive, but not as productive as I could have been. I wasn't happy as I should have been. None of that stuff. I couldn't appreciate people like that. And I didn't want to deal with people. But now that I'm able to speak up for myself and mean what I say and do what I say, I'm better. I'm better now than I've been ever in my life. So what do I eat? Um, people want to know, what am I eating? Well, because, you know, my diet is is designed to fit me. It's designed to fit me. So my thing is, with my nutritionist, our goal is to build my muscle. So I'm eating lots of eggs, eating lots of chicken, lots of turkey meat. When I do eat bread... I'm only eating like one slice of bread. I haven't changed the whole wheat or, 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 or white bread. It's a one. I just know that I eat one slice of it. And, you know, that's good right there. If I eat sweets, I try to um try to limit myself on sweets because I love chocolate. So Nutella's been helping me with that. Every now and then, I, if I want something really sweet, I'll get me some Nutella and just get me a spoon filled spoonful and let that be um i'm still eating my salads and my vegetables now my plate used to be 
my plate used to be um 80 90 percent fruits and vegetables but now it's back to what it's supposed to be it's like normal portions i didn't take away the fruits and vegetables she didn't want me to take them away but she wanted me to decrease them back to its normal proportion and increase my protein so i haven't took um veggies and stuff out i'm just eating the right type of veggies like the squash um, the cabbage, um, the leafy green vegetables and stuff. You know, I'm still eating my fruits and vegetables, just adding more protein. As far as the boiled egg go, um, when I eat boiled eggs, I eat three at a time. And that is with the yolk. She did say it's okay to eat the yolk because now they're finding that the yolk doesn't make your cholesterol high at all. Um, so she told me to eat three of those, um, what else am I eating? I'm, I've been limited on pinto beans. They don't want me to eat pinto beans like that because of gout. So I have to be careful which beans I do select to eat. Um, I did lentil soup, lentil soup um, the other day, and that was really good because I love all kind of beans. So it don't matter to me. I can eat beans for days, which I did the last two years. That was my everyday meal was beans. <laughs> but... um. And the diet that she fixed for me, it, it helps my joints. My joints aren't aching anymore. My thighs aren't aching anymore. And it don't even feel like I'm toting the weights anymore. Because now that I'm lifting weights, my skin is pulling together like it's supposed to. And it's, it's, it takes time. It's nothing that you can rush. So if you get anxiety about rushing to lose so many pounds in so many days, um, you're probably not going to have good results on it. And you're not going to feel good about the work that you're putting in on your body. For me, when I do my exercise, uh, I don't have no certain time of day when I do exercise. I do it when it's convenient. Um, but I just make sure that I do it. That's the thing, keeping the momentum to do it. So what I do is I know I'm always sitting at my table writing. So I leave my weights right there on a chair beside my table so that I can see them and not forget to pick them up and use them three three times a week or four times a week, depending on what's going on that week. I'm going to use my weights because it don't take but 10, 15 minutes to get that done. My exercise routine is not 30 minutes long. It's not, for real. It's a simple little 15 minutes. The only reason why exercise seems difficult is because you're paying attention to what everyone else is doing and not what your body needs. See, what may fit for one person may not fit for all. It didn't work for me. Having anxiety was not a good thing for me to be trying to go to any gyms. Not with anxiety. Because I wasn't going to get nothing done because I was going to be worried about who was looking at me. And trying to impress people. So so that, that didn't do it. And it puts more pressure on you. You shouldn't be pressured whenever it comes down to losing weight. You should be mentally fit and ready to do whatever it takes to get you back in the best help that you can be in. And that's my goal right there. My goal ain't trying to impress nobody. I thank God that I look good with it, though, and that I'm finally appreciating it. And I thank God also that my mental health is doing better, too. Because if your mental health is bad, it don't matter how much weight you lose. Because I lost 176 pounds and still felt like crap and didn't know why. But that was why, because I was going through that depression and anxiety. Now, do I still have depression and anxiety? Yeah, just like many of you still have depression and anxiety. We're going to always, depression and anxiety is always going to be there lurking. But you just got to know how to cope with it, resist it. Make sure you're submitting yourself to God to resist that temptation to just lay there and do nothing. Make sure that you're staying prayed up. Make sure you're talking to positive people in your life, positive people who can help you go forward and not backwards. And that's about it. So all I can really tell you is to put yourself first sometime. And when I say put yourself first, that means you pick out a day that you have for just you. If you can't do it and you got a lot of kids, well, you pick out a few moments out of the day that you can have to just you. 
Don't let people convince you that it's difficult to do this stuff when it's not. It's not difficult.